Well, we might as well go ahead and get started. We have a few things to cover this week, and we'll uh, try to get to it all. Uh, let's see, viewer updates. We have uh, thumb, you know, thumbnails, inventory preview has been in RC for a while. Uh, I think that's been updated recently. Uh, we also have a, an RC out for the emoji viewer now. That's uh, been out as a project viewer for a while, but this is the this is the first RC, so that means uh, more people will be getting it, and we'll be getting better stats about how well it's behaving and what the crash rate looks like and all of that stuff. Um, so looking forward to getting that one out. I think that that'll be a that'll be a fun feature that people will uh, hopefully enjoy using. Uh, let's see other things. Uh, a lot of work ongoing with GLTF. Uh, uh, I know there's a lot of open questions about changes to graphics appearance and how we basically how we make PBR look good without making other stuff uh, look too different from what it used to. Um, and there's uh, there's still a lot of active discussion going on about that. Um, don't have a definite answer to exactly what's going to happen there, but it's uh, it's definitely top of mind for us right now. Um, one other big change, well, I don't know, maybe it's a less big change, but there's there's a messaging change for GLTF viewer uh, and simulator. Uh, turned out that under some circumstances, um, uh, objects with the new materials that were getting updated would generate a, a tremendous amount of bandwidth, and that wasn't really uh, affordable. So we've been coming at that from kind of two different prongs. One is that uh, we make the messages more compact, and the other is we send them less often, and uh, so it's it's looking quite a bit better now. Uh, let's see. Other than that, um, oh, this one has, this one was discussed a few months ago, and we kind of put it on the shelf for a while, but we're talking about, we are going to standardize the white space in the viewer, um, there there is a way that works as far as we can tell for merging uh, changes while ignoring white space changes. So I think this gets us around the uh, infinite conflicts problem. Um, it it doesn't fix the everybody has a different opinion about what white space is supposed to be problem. So uh, you know I'm sure that there will be people who are uh, unenthusiastic about our choice of settings, but we have some that we like, and we're gonna we're gonna be moving forward with those. So I will uh, I'll keep you keep you all in the loop on that. Uh, let's see other things. Uh, oh, MFA. Uh, Brad, are you here? Do you want to give us the, the yeah view on uh, MFA? Yeah, sure. So uh, this has been in the works for a while, but we're finally gonna. Um... To, to do it. Uh, so there's been a grace period where MFA uh, enabled accounts have been able to log in with uh, non-MFA viewers uh, and we're going to be turning that off uh, very soon. Um, probably in the next week or two. Um, so uh, if you haven't implemented MFA in your viewer then uh, people who have MFA turned on will no longer be able to use your viewer. Um, so, uh, I don't think that's a big concern. I think most of the viewers I'm aware of have, have implemented this a while ago, so, um, so it should be okay, but if that's not true, uh, let us know. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, it should be good to, to actually you know, get this fully uh, rolled out with the grace period over. So, yeah, I I think this 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 really gives us what the original vision for MFA was, which is something that you know protects your account in a consistent way, um, as opposed to something that's sort of easy to get around if you just use a different viewer. Uh, do you, did you say anything about the? Uh, recovery process if somebody does have problems oh right. correct uh, I forgot to mention that yes so um, so if 
a user uh, does, you know, need to recover access to their account because MFA is, uh, they've lost the, the MFA credentials, there is a support process for, for recovering their access to their account manually. Um, so, yeah. Um, uh, basically file a support ticket and, uh, and they will help you re uh, reset your MFA credentials. Um, and go from there. Um, so if, if, if people are complaining about this, uh, that's, that's what we should tell them is, you know, file a support ticket and we'll help you get back into your account. Okay, thanks. Uh, let's see, I think that covers most of the topics. Oh, I did have a kind of a, a survey question for, for folks who are doing viewer development, um, which is uh, how, uh, how have you been handling signing? I know that our, our viewer build process uh, doesn't do signing in a code signing in a way that uh, is sort of portable to anybody else since it's built on top of our our uh, team city build code um, in the longer term we're planning to it's, it's hopefully it's not even that long at this point but uh, in the as soon as we can get it working term we're going to be moving to github actions for viewer builds and uh, that will probably let us have uh, uh, you know, signing implemented in a way that's more portable to to be used by other people. Um, but I'm I'm curious in the meantime how how have folks been doing that? Is there any sort of a standard way to do it, or has each viewer kind of been putting it together, uh, you know, themselves? You don't think anybody's doing signing currently? Okay. Yeah, it is, it is a tremendous hassle. We've, uh, you know, the amount of time it took us to get code signing working with Apple, it was either signing or notarization. I'm, I'm hazy on the difference between those, but uh, in any case, it was... Uh, it was a change that we had to make at one point to to make Apple happy, and man, that was a long project. Yeah, you say costs involved. Are you thinking like money costs or hassle costs? Okay. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for the update. Um, so yeah, once we actually do have GitHub Actions, I don't know if that will make life easier for you or not. You you would still have you wouldn't have to reinvent the infrastructure. Um, we'll see how that all works out. Uh, let's see other things. No, I think that's I think that's everything that uh, that we had for this week. So we're uh, we're open for questions or discussions. Anything on your minds?
Uh, yeah, it's it's fine to ask about uh, TPV applications here. I, I may or may not be able to give you an immediate answer, but it's a, it's a fair topic. Oh, you said you sent a new TPV application? Yeah, sorry, I may not have seen that yet. Oh, just a second, let me pull it up. TPV 530. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I don't have any update on that because I I hadn't seen it before. But I will uh, I will take a look and uh, uh, and get back to you. Um, we we're supposed to acknowledge these shortly after they come in, so I will uh, I'll make sure you at least get a response to tell you it's it's uh, working its way through the system. Chat line option. Uh, yeah, I remember we've discussed this. I don't know what the current status is. Um, I'll, have to, uh, I'll have to check on that. Kyle, you wouldn't happen to remember the state of the discussions on that, would you? I don't. Yeah. Okay. Thanks.
Make the you make the group list non-static. Huh, interesting. Uh, the best way to get that to us would be feature request, Jira. You probably know the drill by now. Okay, cool, thanks. I don't remember any previous discussions about that, so I, uh, I don't have anything else to say about it, really. I have not heard anything about the center kits. Yeah, we've had questions about the the dev kits and and the center content in the past, and uh, the the feedback I got from the from the folks who are working on that is that the best best way to reach them is through the uh, forum threads. Um, so as far as I know, that's still the recommended contact point.
Oh no, I'm here. Uh. Uh. New slots in the terrain tab. Um. Uh, so there's there's a wiki page on that. Um. Uh, it, if you're in the content creators channel of the Discord, there's a there's a some information in the pins, uh, including the uh, developer builds and uh, a wiki page with info on how to test. Yeah, and just just to be just to be clear, it's very much an alpha build, and it's uh, very much safety not guaranteed, subject to change. So just keep that in mind. Oh, was this about the, the, uh, was it, was this the conversation that was going on in the Discord channel or something unrelated? They got it. Yeah, I think that was discussed a bit on the in the content creators meeting. I think there's definitely an intersection of uh is this uh is this an issue on our side or on the third party viewer side and um I think that's definitely an open question and certainly uh uh as uh more people test out this build we're probably gonna see a wider range of hardware as well. Uh, sure. The Emoji Viewer is a viewer that's been out as a project viewer for a while. Uh, it adds the ability to use emojis, like colored emojis in chat. Um, and if you look at the release notes, which I don't know why we don't call it the Ultimate Viewers page anymore, uh, but it has a link to the to the Emoji Viewer there in the uh, release candidates list if you want to grab it and check it out. There's some new UI added to the um, 
chat floater that lets you uh, choose emojis and bop them in there. Uh, I don't think there's any way to create your own currently. The, the emojis we support now are just the ones that are already defined in Unicode. Um, so uh, if there's if there's uh, customization, would have to be something we'd look at in a possible subsequent release. Uh, we're not sure about Noto font. We we did some experiments with it, and it didn't really work right. Um, it's pretty likely that our font support in the viewer needs some work to to support it fully. Uh, so uh, we uh, we haven't really decided on that one yet. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by turning it off. You want the do you want the emojis to just not show up in chat, or you want to not have the UI for creating, for for adding emojis to your chat? Uh, hmm. I, I don't know how that would work. I mean, there's there's hundreds of different. Uh, emojis and most of them don't have a corresponding way of typing them in text. I mean, obviously you can you can do. Uh, I think you can still paste a smiley in there if you want to, but uh, you've uh, you've also got the option to stick in lots of other things. Would you rather see a square box for Unicode not supported or nothing at all? Sorry, hi. Um, just like how we're doing smileys and everything now with just, uh, you know, brackets and, and colons and things like that, like if you could have the actual option to just not have the smileys, like this is really weirdly personal, but I never found this out until she was 80. My mum freaks out if I accidentally sell her, send her an emoji on my phone. Like she cannot handle the yellow people. <laughs> Which is so weird. Oh, I've like, heard I get about a, this before. I get a whole response from her about, please do not send me them. Please, like, you know, because it's just automatic. Sometimes when you're typing, you'll just throw one in there. And yeah, yeah she, like, freaks. And she, she may be Irish, but she can't be the only one that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We haven't uh, we haven't heard about this before. What, what I'm thinking maybe then is just send the text of the emoji. Right, that's what I mean. So instead okay. of it being the yellow face, it would still be a smile. It's just how we're doing it now. So I'm just you know, and and also some people just don't want the spamming because that's what will happen. I mean, it's bad enough sometimes you'll just be in a group chat and suddenly. You know, during Christmas and Halloween, you'll just get 15 lines of text because somebody's found the Unicode for a Christmas tree and Merry Christmas and stuff like that. And it's nice the first time, but the 57th time in November, it's a bit much. So I can see that happening a lot with emojis and, and I kind of think, well, it, if you can just toggle I mean, in and out of the feature... There's... Yeah, I mean, as you say, people can spam that stuff now. It's just we they don't have the 
they don't have the they color the support. Color. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I don't know. This seems like getting into a broader topic of like, I don't know how how would you make chat communications sort of guaranteed not spammy, regardless of what people around you are choosing. Well, it's not really type. about the spam. It's just about the saying, okay, that's fine. You've conveyed your message, but I don't have a wall of yellow. Um, or I just don't have a wall of emojis. I've just got, you know, the regular type, you know. Yeah. Huh. I, well, I don't know. I mean, if people uh, want to try out the viewer and then give us suggestions for uh, you I'm not know, like ways saying, that they would oh, like to... Should you know, tone it down or whatever, choice. then. Right. Right. I'm like, like I said, I'm not saying everybody shouldn't have fun. I'm just saying it seems like one of those things that there's going to be some people that would prefer they didn't have it. Like they didn't see it that way. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Well, yeah, as, uh, as I say, this is out in RC now, so, you know, some number of people are getting assigned to it at random. If anybody else wants to try it out and, and give us their feedback, we'd certainly be interested to to hear about it. I, you know, I do think it's something that uh, is partly just – it's partly just prior exposure. I mean, I don't know. I thought emojis were kind of weird looking when I first started seeing them, but after after years of living in Slack, it's just like, yeah, okay, there's emojis, and I don't get excited about it. Ah, but if they live in Second Life, then they'll get used to them there. Yeah, I just wonder how also, you know, with a lot of people that have visual issues, we have a lot of those in SL, how that will suddenly, you know, there's all this vivid colour or, or whatever might be quite alarming or, you know, make it more complicated to read. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, we'd, we'd definitely be interested in hearing from those folks and uh, and see what they think once they've had a chance to try it out. I just know I did a blog post the other day and I did a smile. And for some reason to me, when you do a smile in with the bracket and the colon, it seems still a little bit okay. It's still a little bit mature, but I did that on WordPress and it automatically turned it into an emoji in the outcome, like the post when it was posted. And I was like, ah, <laughs> that just looks juvenile um, in the context of actual proper writing. It was really, uh Uh yeah, well Beck, obviously we're not trying to uh turn turn our chat into uh, uh something that's functionally equivalent to Discord. I think that would be a rather big lift.
Yeah. Okay. Well, um, yeah, as I say, you know, give it a try and let us know what you think. I'll be, uh, I'll be curious to see what the feedback looks like once this is, uh, you know, getting, getting picked up by more people. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we're actually auto-converting conventional smileys into emojis. What we have is an emoji chooser that lets you insert whatever emojis you want as a as a separate thing. You know, and those are encoded as Unicode characters. And I mean, I don't know, the usage I see, it's not, it's not all about the smileys, you know, people, uh, people do stick in a lot of facial expressions, but there's a ton of other emojis out there too for, you know, pretty much everything under the sun at this point. If it's in the Unicode standard, then it's probably there. I guarantee we haven't gone through however many thousand emojis and decided which ones to include. So variation selector 15 is to make it black and white. I don't know what the what the fonts we have will do with it, but it's supposed to be a way to request it's rendered as text, quote unquote, instead mm. of an image. Oh, okay. But I think it depends on what our font support is. So I don't know. Yeah, at least a substantial number of the yeah. a substantial fraction of these we do have uh, we do know their text equivalent, um, but uh, I don't know if we have if we have a text equivalent for all of them. Yeah, I mean, if the fonts, uh, I mean, I, obviously, improving some font support is, is a bigger project. But if there's something that's supported in the fonts. And, and font libraries that we have, then exposing yeah. for it might be. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess any emoji that you can actually choose through our own UI does have a a, a text equivalent, um, because that's that's how the you know that's how the menus are structured. So we could potentially display that if, uh, if people really wanted. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's uh, speculative. I, 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 I do. People, I'm, I'm fine with people requesting anything they want, but please actually try it out before you start, uh, you know, go going into all the possible negative ramifications and whatever. I'd, I'd rather have feedback of on the actual feature rather than the speculation. Yeah, sorry. It's just, like I said, it's been a recent development in my household that emojis are taboo. So it just made me think of that straight away, that that's a potential issue. And then, like I said, all the visual problems that, that occur through Second Life residents and things yeah, like that. Well, that that's, you that's a, just yeah, that's uh, interesting feedback. Okay, well, uh, any other questions or topics for this week? Is there any way to feature request more meetings? <laughs> <laughs> more meetings? Well, I don't know. I guess the way to do that is to is to speak up at this one. Uh, I don't know. We've we've tweaked the the rate of meetings various times. Uh, you know, we've had we've had more frequent meetings in the past, and often there wasn't that much to talk about, and not that many people showed up, and we so we uh, you know we kind of scaled it back a bit. Um, I was thinking well, I, more of the, no offense, I really love this meeting, but I was thinking more in terms of the marketplace one, the web user. Oh, meeting. you mean you mean more, more different meetings, not more of these meetings. Okay. Right. I just mean yeah, yeah. like there's some meetings that are monthly and this one seems to work monthly, but the web user one, which is marketplace, which is commercial, which is the one that drama happens throughout the week, you know, marketplace goes down or people are really upset about something, but then it's a month away. And that just seems like a specific meeting that should be more, you know, like we've got, con it, some of them just should be at least fortnightly, not monthly. Mm, yeah. Uh, I mean, I can pass that along. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, you've got so much going on too with this one. So even this one fortnightly for a little while might be a good good idea. But today w was a lot slower than usual. Maybe it's because it's the beginning of the month. People have other things going on. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. We get a variation how many people show up from week to week anyway. Uh yeah, well, if if folks are interested in more frequent web meetings, um, obviously you can bring that up at the at the web meetings. Are those on? So you're saying that those are only monthly currently? Yeah, yeah, every month. Who who runs so those? Like, uh, syntax. Okay. Uh, what you know, I could drop syntax a line about it. Um, just just to uh, say there was a question about it here. Um,
Tracer, have you tested the feature? If you didn't test the feature, I'm not looking at your bug. Okay, yeah, but you you actually downloaded the emoji viewer and made an attempt to try it out, right? <laughs> You're in trouble. Yeah. Okay. I I just I, I would much rather get feedback from people who actually tried out the feature. I mean. I'm not saying they'll be happier with it if they tried out the feature. Uh, it's entirely possible that what will happen is that they'll find other bugs that we don't know about and want to complain about those, but it's just it's much more useful if they've actually seen it in action first. Okay. Well, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the link to the variation selector. That's that's uh, something that might uh, might be relevant. I'm not sure if our particular emoji parsing will handle that correctly or not. Somebody actually just asked about it in the Firestorm preview group and this was happening to me too um, on Rumpus the other day. I was resing a uh, reflection probe thing, whatever they're called, the things that you turn them into, um, and then I couldn't delete it, couldn't select it unless I highlighted the whole area and then it was almost impossible to delete it. But it wasn't that way like a month ago, I had no problem with deleting them or selecting them. Has something changed there? It sounds vaguely familiar. I, the, there might be some change with clickability or something. Uh, yeah, Cosmos there was a bug about or... that. Um, and I... I... Did not work on it. I forget the details, but about um, about click through behavior for phantom objects or something like that, and and reflection probes uh, have some automatic behavior with with uh, phantom. I forget the the bug though. Sorry, I I wasn't sure. It's definitely who was new. Um, that use, I think. Uh, if you enable transparent um, visibility, can you then click on it easily? Ooh, yeah, that's a concern. 
Yeah, because um, it's definitely new because I never had any problem a couple of weeks ago and then I did the other day and somebody's just asked the same thing in the preview group. They're saying that they're having problems as well. So that just reminded me of it. But um, uh, yeah, like like I said, it, it's it's new. So it's sort of slipped through the cracks there somehow. It's definitely a change. But for the preview Firestorm people, it's their first experience with it. So they don't know that it didn't do that before. Yeah, that would be a good one to have a, a bug report for if, if there isn't one already. I'll make a note and I'll, I'll try it on both um, Firestorm and SL Viewer before I do anything because I'm not sure if it was one over the other or just new on both. So it looks like reflection probe ambience goes really high in that uh, in that video. Does it be, does it behave this way in the rumpus rooms? For the reflection probe ambience? Okay, well, I guess we're about at time. Uh, 
I think we had a lot of interesting discussions this week and appreciate everybody coming by. And we will talk to you later.